Hi everyone and welcome back to this Nextflow and NFCore online community training event. My name is Chris and I'm a developer advocate for Secure Labs and I'll be the one taking you through the training material again today. First of all, we'll start off with a recap of what we did yesterday. Uh, we'll talk about what we will do today and then what will be covered in session three and four. So in session one, we started with a welcome and an introduction to Nextflow. Then we started to understand how Nextflow scripts are written by exploring the hello.nf script. And finally, we started to develop our own proof of concept RNA seq pipeline. Today, in session two, we will start off with an introduction to NF Core and we will explore the NF Core website. Then we'll start to look at NF Core for users and developers. And finally, we'll look at NF Core modules and sub workflows and how these can be used and shared between different pipelines. In session three, we will continue to expand on the ideas that are introduced as a part of session one and will be introduced today as a part of session two, such as managing dependencies and containers, channels, processes, and operators. You have an introduction to Groovy, as well as some more information about modularization. Similarly, in session four, we'll continue to expand on some of the concepts that have already been sort of introduced but not properly explained, such as configuration profiles, deployment scenarios, cache and resume, a little bit about troubleshooting, and then we'll finish off session four with um, a bit of information about how you can get started with Nextflow Tower. It is worth mentioning, reinforcing here as well, that a lot of the things that we have covered and will cover today, particularly the configuration and modularization uh, using modules and sub workflows, the way these things are written and potentially some of the explanations that I've given and will give today will be very narrow and we will come back to these in greater detail as a part of session three and four. However, if you do have any questions as we're going through the material, uh, please direct those to the dedicated uh, event channels on Slack. So we have a number of different channels there for the different languages, and we have a number of community volunteers who will be there to help you uh, if you do encounter any problems. Okay, so let's get started. What I would like everyone to do is follow this link here, and this will take us over to the NF Core website. Okay, so when you hit this web page, what you'll see um, is a bit of a welcome screen with a lot of information about uh, NF Core. Um, what I do want to highlight is some of the features of the NF Core pipelines, which is uh, its documentations. So all NF Core pipelines have extensive documentation. Uh, so what you need to install the pipeline, uh, what you can expect to do to, um, to use the pipeline, as well as what you can expect as the outputs of the pipeline. Um, so that's really just to ensure that you understand uh, what you're doing and why. NF Core pipelines have extensive CI testing. So every time a pipeline is modified, um, on the repo, um, there's a lot of testing that is done to make sure that everything is still working and that the pipeline is still conforming to best practices. Pipelines are all released as stable releases, so you can always go back to a previous release using a revision. Um, to, if you need to go back and run a pipeline um, as an older version, um, so an example of that might be that you've run a handful of samples or a handful of analyses, and then a new sample or something else arrives and you want to go back and do it again or add something into that analysis. Uh, so it's really, really powerful um, having, having really solid version control. As well as that, all of the software um, in NFCore pipelines is packaged. So you can use Docker, Singularity, um, Conda, or others to automatically bring in the tools and software required to run a pipeline using appropriate uh, version controls for that software as well. Um, so you never need to worry about installing uh, anything locally. Pipelines are also portable and reproducible. Um, so this is really... I'm sort of touching on some of these other concepts, um, such as having packaged software and several releases, is that um, collectively the pipeline should be portable so that you can run it um, on separate devices without having to worry about um, there being too much happening behind the scenes, which might affect the results. Um, with the things like the stable releases and the, the pinned package versioning, um, it should obviously all be reproducible as well. Something else worth uh, knowing is that all pipelines undergo uh, full test, uh, full testing using full size test data um, on AWS. Um, we're also expanding into using Microsoft Azure for, for running full uh, size tests on the cloud. Um, so that should give you some confidence that if you do scale these pipelines, that they do uh, they do work. As mentioned yesterday in the introduction, um, NF Core is not just another registry. Um, there's this core idea of working with the community. Um, so you can find collaborators and sort of work together to make one pipeline really great rather than everyone working separately. Uh, there are certain silos um, and not potentially getting the, the feedback and the input um, that would be achievable uh, by doing this as a part of the community. Pipelines start from a template, um, which is a really fantastic 
um, way of, of starting any pipeline. Um, and it's all integrated into um, the ethical tooling. So you can integrate things like modules um, and sub workflows really quickly and easily. Um, and there's also regular template updates, uh, which can be synced in so that your pipeline is kept up to date um, to allow it to benefit from all the end of core tooling, um, as well as maintain best practices. Um, finally, there's this collaborate, don't duplicate ethos, which, which largely means that um, NF Core won't accept pipelines that are effectively a duplication of another pipeline. What we do, um, and what NF Core um, sort of strives towards, is having um, a real community where people are working together on that one pipeline, um, or a pipeline that does that one particular process, um, or, or has one particular function rather. Um, and that's really just so that we can sort of collaborate and forces that community uh, rather than duplicating and creating more work for ourselves by doing something that somebody has already done. Down below here, we have a little bit um, more additional training videos. Um, so these are a really great resource if you want to um, sort of understand more or didn't understand something or if I've described something poorly. Uh, these are a really great resource to, to go away and have a look at. Um, some more information down the bottom here about getting started um, installing and running uh, Nextflow and NF Core, um, as well as some more links uh, for people that are already using uh, NF Core pipelines, as well as some more um, sort of quick links to different parts of the website. What I will do quickly is just work along this top banner here and just kind of show you um, some of the things that already exist on the website. Um, the website really is a great resource for anyone that um, wants to explore NF Core, um, see what pipelines are available and potentially uh, how to run them. So over here um, under pipelines, we have a list of all the pipelines that are available. Um, you can see here at the time of recording this, there are 75 pipelines that are currently available um, as part of NF Core, um, and they're all listed here. Um, I'm just going to pick one at random, so let's go with um, Eager. Um, what this will do is take you to a new web page for that particular pipeline, and it gives you kind of a, an introduction here um, for what the pipeline does, a bit of a summary, um, how to use it quickly, so a quick start, um, some of the summary steps, and, and kind of <clears throat> excuse me, what you might expect to see um, and be able to um, take as outputs from this pipeline. Um, like I said, this is really just a, um, an outline, um, an introduction to the pipeline. Um, down here below, you can see some of the authors and people that have contributed. Um, this kind of example of all, you know, this is a community initiative, so there are lots of contributors um, who have made this pipeline possible, um, as well as some pipeline, uh, excuse me, some references down the bottom. Um, Next along with the sort of second um, second tier um, set of pages uh, beyond introduction is the results. So like I said, this has been run on a um, full, size, full size test data set. Um, I think with this particular pipeline, um, you can see all the results here um, under the NF Core AWS Megatest Eager folder hosted on AWS. You can also see uh, the usage docs. So again, this is kind of like some quick start information that you can use to, to run this pipeline. Um, again, there's, there's a lot of extra information here, which I don't have time to go into. Um, but if you do want to use this pipeline, this is a really good place to start. Um, as well as this, we have a list of all the parameters that are included as a part of this pipeline. So in session one of this uh, training event, uh, we sort of talked about parameters very briefly. Um, you can see here that in a full pipeline, there can be lots of different uh, parameters that are required. Um, but thanks to like extensive documentation on NF Core, uh, these are well described and you should be able to um, find everything you need to understand what these parameters are doing and how you might want to tune them. Um, here as well, we have output docs, um, which again is just a way to describe what you're actually going to expect as the output from uh, this particular pipeline. Um, finally, there's some release statistics, um, just statistics on each of the different um, versions. Um, What's worth mentioning here as well is that if you are trying to run an old version of the pipeline and the documentation has changed, you can scroll back um, to the previous versions here um, over to the right. Um, so the documentation is never um, lost. Moving along the top, um, so besides pipelines, we have modules. Modules are a little bit like pipelines in which they are hosted and stored on NF Core. Um, modules are effectively processes that have been written and submitted to NF Core by the community. These are generally pieces of software that uh, can be shared between different pipelines. So with Mathematics, for example, um, the singular tools might be used across multiple different pipelines. Um, what we have here is the modules repository, um, 
where each of these has been packaged into um, NextFlow script already as a process or a module. Um, here we already have a list of the inputs and outputs, um, a little bit of information of how to use that as well. Something we will be exploring later is how um, NFCore tooling can quickly uh, install these, update, um, and eventually remove them if you need to um, remove these modules from your pipelines. Um, as a part of this as well, we've also got sub-workflows. Um, sub-workflows are effectively the chaining of multiple modules, which can also be installed um, and edited and, and modified um, using the NFCore tooling. Um, these are larger blocks, obviously, um, because they do comprise multiple modules, and they largely string together multiple modules that are frequently used together. Next, uh, across the top of the page, we have tooling. So NFCore is a separate tool to NextFlow, and it has its own uh, set of tools. Um, here we have a table of concepts lifting all, all the tooling that is available. Um, like I said, we will work through a lot of this today as a part of this, this session. Um, and we will largely sort of work through this in, in mostly this order. Um, we'll start by sort of talking about NFCore, making sure it's installed. Uh, we'll work through some of the execution um, sort of commands and how that works. And then we'll sort of talk about how to create pipelines using some of these um, NFCore create, for example, how things like minting and schema uh, can work. Uh, and then finally, we'll sort of we'll conclude on how the NFCore modules and sub-workflows commands work um, and how they might benefit your workflows as well. Over here, we have documentation. Uh, so to the left, we have usage, which is a lot of information about how you can use these pipelines. Um, over here to the right, we have contrib uh, contributing, rather, uh, which has information about how you can contribute to NFCore and some more information about uh, best practices when you are writing um, NFCore uh, pipelines, modules, and sub-workflows. Down the bottom, we have some tu extra tutorials. Um, the material we use today will come from this, uh, well, most of it will come from this at least, uh, but we'll come back to this very shortly. NFCore is a community, and like an eager community, also has a lot of events. Um, thanks to funding from the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, we are able to run um, a bite-sized seminar series. So weekly, we have um, members of the NFCore community present either a pipeline uh, or some of the tooling. Um, and these are a really great reference for anyone that is um, sort of new to the community or trying to understand a pipeline um, or a part of tooling. Um, it's just an introduction. So these are short, about 15 minutes, followed by questions. Um, and they are a really, really great resource, like I said. Um, as well as this, we do have um, other events that do occur uh, quite regularly. So um, in for training events like this, where we have community members who present um, the training material, as well as um, NFCore hackathons. So the hackathons are effectively events, um, which are hosted in GatherTown, where we have community mem the whole community gather, or as many as community that can attend. Um, and we will work on different issues um, and improvements on NFCore pipelines, modules, um, tooling, everything to do with the NF NFCore world um, is worked on. And it's a really great event and a lot of fun. Um, and it's a great way to sort of meet people that you might uh, come across as developers um, in, in the community, um, really sort of get to know them, which is, which is always a lot of fun. Okay, uh, finally on this page, we have um, about which um, is a lot of information about NFCore, about its history, a um, bit more about the community and some community statistics, excuse me, statistics, um, a list of publications, some information about the mentorship program. Um, so again, thanks to the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, we have a mentorship program where uh, mentors and mentees are paired up and work on um, a project together for about three months. We have the code of conduct, um, as well as some more information on actually joining uh, NFCore on different platforms. So uh, Slack, which I hope everyone has already joined, Slack is a really great resource. Um, if you ever have any questions about a pipeline or a piece of tooling or just want a bit of guidance, um, Slack is a really great place to go. Um, the community is really um, fantastic and proactive in answering questions. Uh, of course, we also have the GitHub repository, um, a Twitter, a Mastodon, and a YouTube account. Um, YouTube is where we store most of the videos like this, um, as well as all the bite-sized seminars, for example. Um, so the YouTube is a really great resource as well. Okay, so... Today's training material is different to session one and what we will do in session three and four as well. Um, and this is just because we want to use the NFCore tooling um, and it's nice to have a slightly different environment. So what we will do um, is we will go over to uh, the docs. So this is where we were before. So we can go to docs at the top of the page. Down here on the right, underneath contributing, we have tutorials. 
and we will click on this link here, which is creating pipelines with MF Core. So this was um, some material that was created um, for the last set of trainings in October 2022. Um, and we're going to use this again as kind of a base for the NF Core training content. But also I'm going to kind of diverge from this a little bit um, when we talk about actually executing an NF Core pipeline and some of the considerations that you might have uh, when you try and sort of uh, configure this for your own environment. So um, we will click on this launch Git pod uh, right here. It'll bring up your Git pod environment and start to load um, load this, this effectively a Git pod repository. What you can see um, is again, it always take a few moments to uh, load. What I'll do in the meantime is that if you are trying to run this locally and you've already got Nextflow installed, um, you can install NF Core using um, pip. So it's hosted here on PyPy. Um, NF Core is, the NF Core tooling is written in Python. Um, so you can install it from here and also from um, Anaconda, or uh, Bioconda rather, I'm um, using the Conda install command. Okay, so that's all loaded or is um, loading now. Um, this is just Git lens, you can close that and everything else is still initializing. So like Nextflow, um, NF Core is continuously updated and improved. Um, so like occasionally there can be bugs and other things that come through on this. Um, please don't be too alarmed if the, if the latest version does have a bug, it'll generally be resolved pretty quickly. Um, and just as I say that, there is a bit of a bug here. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on, um, but let's just try and clear that and hopefully it won't cause too many issues. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is make this a little bit bigger. Um, what's that, 150? Hopefully everyone can see that. I don't want to make it much bigger, otherwise we lose quite a bit of real estate uh, when you're viewing some of these commands and outputs. What we will do first um, is let's make a new directory. So where you should land when you open this is in the tools folder. So this is work, workspace tools. And we will make a directory called training. Uh, we can now see that this has been created over here. And we're going to move into that folder. We can see that it's empty and we're actually sitting in this folder, the training folder now. What I'm also going to do, as you can see over here in the Explorer, that we've also already got quite a lot of um, information, a few different configs, um, chain logs, markdowns, um, YAML files. We don't actually want to be in this folder when we execute um, our commands or start using the different integral tooling, um, just because some of this might interfere. So um, like I've already done, I've moved into this training directory. Um, like I said, you do want to be in a different folder, um, otherwise it will kind of compete. Um, in some way, but just to kind of remove this and make it a little bit easier to follow um, what's going on, I will click up here. So these three lines in the top left-hand corner, I will go to File, and then I will go to um, Open Folder. So this new tab will open, Open Folder. Um, we're already in Workspace, but we want to click on Tools, and then Training. So this is the folder I've created. If you've called it something else or it's something slightly different, um, that's okay. Um, really what all I'm doing is just sort of resetting this, this browser view so I get a slightly nicer um, explorer so that all of that has been emptied. Okay, um, so that is empty. We should have a, a nice clean terminal because I've just cleared it um, and the explorer is empty as well. So what we will do first is I'm just going to show you that um, Nextflow is installed. So you can see Nextflow version uh, 22, 10, 1. Um, that's fine. The version in this, um, this session doesn't matter too much. Um, and also, we're just going to check that NF Core is installed. Again, this should be installed because uh, this environment has NF Core installed already. Um, but NF Core, we go dash dash version. It'll print out the version, which is 2.7.2. If you're watching this at a later time and the version has changed, um, I don't anticipate it's going it's to make uh, too many differences to what we're doing today. Um, at least in the sort of next six to 12 months. Um, but in saying that, um, if it does, um, there are ways to actually revert this um, to use a previous version. Um, okay, so here we are. It's still empty. We're still in the right folder. Um, Nextflow and NF Core is installed. Fantastic. So the first command um, I want to sort of talk about and show you is this NF Core command. So this is diff different to the Nextflow command. 
And what we're going to use is, um, is help. So this will just list all of the, um, the different commands that are available as a part of NF Core. We will work through a lot of these today. Um, and largely what's going to happen is we'll start with these commands for users and then we'll sort of branch into these commands for developers. So the first command that we will look at today is this NF Core list. And what that'll do is list all of the repositories, all of the different pipelines that are available on NF Core. So here you can see um, the pipeline names, um, how many stars they have, the latest release number, when it was released. Um, so you can see here Fun Scan was released seven minutes ago, which is exciting, um, or at least um, this, this version is. Um, when it was last pulled. So that's every time you run or pull a pipeline from NF, NF Core, um, it'll it'll give you a last pull and it'll store it on your computer for you um, in, a, in a hidden Nextflow folder, um, as well as do you have the latest release. And this is important um, later on that if you're trying to execute an older version of a pipeline, um, a different release, um, you will need to sort of update or modify what version you have um, stored on your system. Anyway, um, let's try and pull a workflow. So this is going to pull the workflow down from the repository and have it stored locally for you. So for this, you can use the next slide pull command. We're going to pull this from the NF core repository. Um, and let's just pull the um, pipeline that comes to mind, which is chipseq. So again, this is Nextflow pull, um, NF core chipseq. What you can do with this command as well is that you could actually um, substitute NF core here for one of your local repositories. Of course, that isn't an NF core pipeline, but it works the same way in that you can um, pull down a pipeline and then sort of uh, modify it, update it, control it using um, different revisions as well. Um, so what we can do now is we can check to see if this has been downloaded using the NF core uh, list function again. I've made this a little bit bigger, so hopefully you can see it. Um, and as you can see here, what we have is the chipseq pipeline, which has been downloaded um, from nfcore.re chipseq, um, the version when it was, was last updated, when it was pulled by me, and if it's the most recent version, which it is. As an example, um, you might also want a slightly different version for whatever reason. Um, so you could go for minus R and say you really wanted version 1.0.0. You can type that in. And what will happen is, is uh, Nextflow will go away and pull that down for you. Uh, so you can see here, done, revision, a slightly different revision number, also known as 1.0.0. So when you go back to any call list, um, you'll see that this has now been pulled. Um, it is no longer the most recent version. It is version one. Um, well, previously it was version two. Um, if you wanted to change this back, um, you can just type in something like master. So the most recent branch is known as master. Well, the most recent commit is known as the master commit. The most um, that is the version's release is probably a better, better way to describe it. Um, we can see here, so I've pulled master. Um, we can look at that again, and it's been put back up to 2.0.0, which is cool. Okay, so what I will do now uh, is show you how to execute an NF4 pipeline. Um, and simply, you don't actually even need to pull a pipeline. What you could do is just run your pipeline. So Nextflow run, you can type in the repository name. In this case, we're pulling it from NF Core. Um, and for simplicity, I'm just going to go for the Chipseq pipeline again. Um, actually, no, I won't. Let's go for something different. Let's go for, um, what's a good one that won't be too big? I think RNA-seq is quite popular, so let's look at that. Uh, so Nextflow run, RNA-seq, so this is a different pipeline. I haven't pulled it. This wasn't listed in um, when I use NF core list. Um, I know that when I run this pipeline, um, it's something that we will discuss very shortly, is that we need to use um, some profiles to decide um, what package manager is going to be used, and also, in this case, bring in some test data um, and I know that with this pipeline that you need to set an output directory, um, which is a parameter. In this case, I'm just going to call it uh, results. So what I have here, um, again, is I have my next play run command. NF core is the um, NF core repository um, for the RNA-seq pipeline. 
I am using profiles. With most pipelines, you can, um, you'll probably need to specify at least one profile um, for the software manager that you want to use. So as a minimum, I'd expect you that you might want to use something like Docker, um, if you want to use Conda or Singularity. Uh, there are others, of course. As well as that, I also want to use um, some test data. So as a part of this pipeline, all pipelines have a built-in test um, data set or test profile, which is a minimal set of test data, which is used for the automated testing when it's pushed up to GitHub. Um, but you can also run it locally uh, to test that the pipeline is working on your system. Like I said, I'm going to use Docker because um, Docker is installed in the system and I set the output directory. You might not need to include this on all pipelines, but I just know for RNA-seq pipeline that it is required. If I was to try to execute this without it, it would just give me an error message saying that it isn't working. Um, please include the output, um, or please specify an output directory. Okay, so that's um, pulling the NFCOR RNA-seq repository. Um, so much like the nextflow pull command, um, if you just go straight to nextflow run, it will run it. Um, in the background. Uh, this is the warning I wasn't anticipating, but it looks like it's um, just telling us that it's um, using this GTF file as a priority because there was a GTF and GFF file parameter both included. Um, so that doesn't look like anything to worry about. What it's done here is just list all the processes that are included as a part of this pipeline. Um, and what it'll be doing now is, is going away and downloading those, um, those soft this, the software um, from Docker Hub, and then executing those commands with Docker. Um, what we can see is it's already starting to sort of um, process some of these, so one of one, 100%. Um, it is preparing the genome, um, checking the input samples, um, and this will just tick away slowly over time. In the meantime, what I think I will do, um, uh, what's worth showing actually, um, if we do your NF call list again, uh, what we should see is that um, this pipeline has already been pulled and then it is the most recent version uh, that we have on our system, which is cool. Um, so I didn't have to actually download it and run it. Um, as well as that, something I could have done um, is actually just called a um, slightly different revision straight from the command line. Um, so while that's still running, that will take some time. Um, Oh, I could have just, for example, done nextflow run, nfcore, RNA seq, profile, test, docker, um, outdoor results. Um, so this was the command I typed before, so at least any typos that I've missed. Um, but say I wanted to run version 2.0.0, I could have just put that in there and it would have run that version for me. Okay. Um, while that is running, what I'll do um, is actually look at some of the documentation online and then we'll have a quick look at the actual repository uh, on GitHub. So if you are just trying to execute a pipeline, some of this stuff isn't um, necessarily essential to know, but it will help you understand how some of these things fit together. Um, and that's quite valuable if you are trying to configure a pipeline. So one thing that is worth um, understanding is that with Nextflow, you can actually configure a pipeline in lots of different places. So here on the Nextflow um, documentation, um, this is just the latest, um, here under configuration files, there's an explanation of how um, Nextflow will look for configuration uh, files and parameters in a number of different places. And these are treated in a hierarchy in that um, things specified in the command line will override things that are provided in a prams file um, or a config file or in your next config in the current directory, work directory, um, your home directory or um, the main.nf file. And all of this might seem quite overwhelming and it is, it is quite intimidating when you realize that it can be parameters stored in so many places. Um, but most of these files you will never have to touch if you are simply executing a pipeline um, and then of course has tooling to help make executing these pipelines easier um, so that you never really have to overthink it or get into the nitty gritty of writing a, um, a parameter file, for example. So 
One thing that um, I will show you in the repository um, over here. So this is the actual repository, uh, the GitHub repository for the RNAC pipeline. Um, over here, there is a, a config file called conf, C-O-N-F. Inside that, we have a number of config files. Um, the first one I wanted to point out is the base config. Um, so this is just um, a config file with a lot of information about the processes um, being run. And here we have this with label. Um, with label basically means any process that has been labeled with this will be given these um, resources to run. So this is quite a, a powerful way of um, allocating resources for different modules. And you'll find that most modules on NF core have been given um, a label for running with sort of high, medium, uh, low, or single um, resource allocation. Um, so that's really good. This will be automatically loaded, so you'll never have to uh, really think about this apart from applying labels um, if you're a developer. Um, we also have an igenomes config here. So one thing I haven't talked about is that with NF core pipelines and the NF core template, you can automatically download and include um, genomes that are stored on um, AWS, um, the 11 igenomes reference files. Um, and all these files are available and can be pulled um, automatically as a part of, of your pipeline. Um, here we have a modules config. So this is um, quite a big and potentially quite complicated file where every process that has been named has been given a separate wee block um, with some information about that pipeline or how that process is being run. Um, in this case, where the publish um, directory is for that, that module is included here. What you might find is some of these also have um, um, extra arguments, um, which can be used to help sort of process, um, help control the running of that module. So this is really important for uh, modules that are coming from NF Core, where you might find that uh, running it in your pipeline might be different to running in someone else's. But largely, you should never have to actually touch this file um, if you are just executing a pipeline, but it's worth knowing about if you're interested in becoming a developer. Um, here we have the test config. So this is where this kind of minimal test data set um, comes in. Um, here we just have a little bit of information about um, or some names that's been called itself a test profile and it's the minimal test data set. Um, this is a test profile. So something I haven't spoken about yet is that NF Core also hosts um, a large amount of test data sets. Um, these are all quite small files and reference, uh, reference files, for example. Um, and these can be brought in directly into your pipeline just by specifying um, the web address. And what's cool about this is that all of this is hosted elsewhere. And then if you are executing this locally, it can be brought to the pipeline um, in this test profile. Um, and like I said, the test profile is a really useful and powerful way to test if a pipeline is running. It's used as part of the automated testing when, and when it's pushed to GitHub um, and also executing things locally, which is what I've done um, over here by using the test profile. Okay, so, Ah, of course, as well as that, there's um, the, the full test profile. So this is when we push it up to um, AWS and run it on the cloud. Um, this is the, the test profile for that. As well as that, we also have the nextflow.config. Um, so you'll see this listed over here um, in the config. What is in here is effectively all of the, the default parameters. So most of the time you'll find that um, parameters are switched off or, or the default is for something to be turned off. Um, and then you'll find that is turned on as a part of um, a config or in the command line. So a good way to think of this is that, um, you know, things are turned off unless you turn it on um, because you don't want to execute things that you don't need to as a part of the pipeline. As a part of this down here, we also have these profiles for um, the different software uh, managers. So like I showed earlier, Conda, um, Docker, Singularity, but there are a number of others that you might consider using depending on your system. So, like I said, um, oh, there's an error there. I'm not sure why that's happened. I'll just kill that for now before it does anything. Uh, I don't know what it's doing there. Okay, so I think this might be a, a Git party type issue, but I'll um, I need to troubleshoot that later. Um, anyway, that's not really important, but what we can do is... Um, Excuse me, jump back over here. Where were we? Oh, of course, we're talking about the configs. So back over here, this is what we um, had previously run. Um, looking at this again, we can see Nextflow run NF core um, RNA seq. This is that sort of base uh, that we keep coming back to. These have been included as profiles. So these are included 
um, as a part of that comp folder or the config folder, um, and as well as a part of the um, nextflow.config, so we can sort of specify this Docker profile as well. Um, this is all to manage our execution. What we can also do is overwrite different parts of this. So this is where um, everything happening on the GitHub repository is a as a user, if you're just trying to execute the pipeline, you don't actually need to touch that. Um, and there are different ways to do this. The first is um, by using the launch command. So what you'll find is that um, ineffable pipelines are all developed in a way that there is extensive documentation and also a schema for um, actually understanding what's happening with parameters and also helping um, you use them with, with other NFCore toolings. And, and the tool I want to show you is NFCore Launch, uh, which is this one here, so NFCore Launch. Um, again, I'm going to go back to this repository. Um, even though we did have that error, we can have this appear in the browser. So this is, uh, excuse me, the terminal. Um, and what we can do here is we can pick the version that we want to run. Um, I'm going to go for 3.10 this time. Maybe that's maybe the error error was in 3.10.1. So that's um so I'm trying to do something a little bit different here. What this will do is it's checking the parameters against the schema. So if we go back here, um, we can see that there is a schema, next slide schema uh, JSON, um, which is a big messy file. Um well, it's a very structured file, but there's a lot of information in here which uh, most of you won't want to touch. Um, luckily, we have this to do it for us. Um, I'm going to use the web-based interface. Um, unfortunately, with Gitpod, it isn't always um, overly intuitive to access this in the browser. Um, so I'm just going to exit out of that. So it does say that it's aborted. Um, but what we can do is follow this link here. And what this will do is take us to a launch window. Here is the launch window. Um, and what you'll see is this is effectively the schema that has been rendered in the browser. And what we can do in here is actually edit this with all of the different parameters that we want to use in our execution. And what this will do is create a params file that we can use to execute the pipeline. Um, so here you can see that I've um, sort of used this before. Um, here I've got name, my first launch, profile, given it test docker. Um, the work directory has already been, already been provided. Um, we're not going to resume. So you might remember from attending the first session that we can use this resume function if we've run the pipeline before and it can use the cached results. Um, here we have an input. You might need to provide this normally, but because we're going to use this test profile, uh, there's already been an input path provided as a part of that. Um, an output directory we still need to supply, which I'm going to click results to. Um, we could add an email if we want to. Um, also things like a multi-QC title, save, much, um, save merge fast queue, lots of other things happening in there. What we can also do here, um, and I'm just going to click a bunch of these, is we can change some of the parameters that have been set by default as part of that Nextflow config. So these are all the, the default configs, and what we can do is modify them. Um, if we don't modify them, they'll just stay as a default um, or null or empty or, or depending on what the, um, the actual parameter is. But what's worth um, noting here is that all of these have really nice instructions as well as um, you can get some help text if you need some more advice on what to do or how to set these. So instantly, um, what was quite a lot to sort of understand or comprehend to execute this pipeline, it becomes quite simple. Um, and what I want to do is just click a bunch of these to try and um, demonstrate um, kind of what we're going to get as an output. Um, what I've actually clicked doesn't matter, but I've just changed some of these from the defaults. Then we can click, go up to the top of the page here and click launch. Unfortunately with Gitpod, I don't think this will um, launch in the browser. Um, no, because I've aborted it here. But what we can still do is copy this launch command uh, with this ID. So this entire session has been given this ID. And what this means is that whenever we reference this ID, it is referring to this session. Um, alternatively, we could copy this and then save it as an nf params.json file. Um, 
anyway, back here, what I'm going to do is just paste this. This is NF call launch ID. I'll just pick my ID number, hit enter. You will see that it's gone away. Um, it's pulled um, some information from that browser. It has introduced this nfprams.json. What this is, this is a JSON file of all of the parameters that I've changed. Now, when we execute this using this command here, this params.file flag will use this params, nfprams.json and execute the pipeline. So all those parameters I've changed have been introduced and included. Um, so we can just click yes here and this will start running. So I think that's pretty cool. So what's happened is that I've edited or created this, this JSON from the browser using the NF core launch command. All NF core pipelines will have this. Um, we could use all of the information already provided by the schema to understand what was happening and get some extra help if we needed it. And then we can go straight back into the browser. Okay, so these are all the warnings because I've messed with all the settings. Um, and we can actually execute this um, straight away. So all of the extra hassle of understanding how a pipeline needs to run, um, thanks to the documentation, the schema, the configs, um, has all been done for you. And we didn't have to edit anything in the actual NF core pipeline. Um, so I'm just going to kill that again. Clear that. So I mentioned before that there's also a hierarchy um, for running a pipeline. So when we run this, um, so this is just telling me that the file already exists. Um, it is just loading again. Okay, so this is because I've gone back to this um, this page here. So let's copy that again. Do I want to run this command now? So this is the command that it wants to run. Um, I'm not going to run it this time. So as I mentioned before, there's this hierarchy. And what you will see is that in this hierarchy, oh, where are we? The params file sits above um, a config file, so you can introduce some of these parameters in a config file as well. You might also want to introduce some um, configuration for running your pipeline um, based on an institutional config or something else like that as well. We won't explore that as a part of the session um, just because of time, um, but you can actually introduce a lot of different um, things into a config file like this without using the NF core launch command. As a part of this, there's actually a huge number of different scopes that you can use. So if you're trying to uh, modify your Docker execution, um, if you're trying to modify a particular process, um, there's information there. Um, so here, for example, you could say, um, use the SunGrid engine um, on the long queue when submitting this to the HPC. Um, and we also have like params. So this is where these are the parameters for the actual pipeline. And this is largely what we've modified as a part of the, the uh, excuse me, the um, Rams JSON file already. Um, as a part of NF Core, um, sorry, this is a little bit of a diversion, but as a part of NF Core as well, there's actually, um, you can submit configs, which can be pulled directly from the web as well. So a config might be something that you use at like an institution, for example, to run a particular pipeline or deploy it on your system. Um, a good example of this might be, um, here, for example, that we want to start using um, params. Oh, sorry, profile. Um, I know that there is one for the CRIC. So the CRIC is an institute um, that has submitted a profile to NF Core Profiles. There's documentation online for this. Um, but say you were working in a large institute and you're using the same cluster system, um, you could submit a profile for your institute. Um, it'll be reviewed and accepted by the community, and then you can just automatically run this on your system um, using this particular profile. And this is something I would recommend if you do have like a shared resource that lots of people are using. Um, so here, for example, is some information about the institutional um, config provided. Um, of course, this has failed because I haven't actually added an input sample sheet here. Okay. Um, what I was actually working towards was um, showing you that you can... Um, provide um, some extra information as 
um, directly the command line. This is because anything you put into the command line is kind of overrides everything else. And this is what I was mentioning or trying to describe when I was talking about this hierarchy um, for the configuration listed here. Um, so just for actually a demonstration, I'm going to keep that there. But I am going to change um, this parameter here. So we know that this is called the parameter. Um, this is a new name for Chris. Okay, doesn't matter too much, but we can just execute this again. Um, I won't let this run to completion. We're still using this params file, but we've overwritten um, the params file as well as the profile because we've added this to the to the command line. Which is the name of the parameter followed by um, the actual value that is being included as a part of that. So we can see uh, this has been added here. But you can imagine that if you're trying to override the number of um, CPUs being used or the memory or the time um, or a different step like this, um, you can do that quite quickly and easily. So um, that was quite a clumsy example of how you can use configs to um, sort of control the execution of a pipeline. Um, what we talked about was using the nfcore uh, launch command, which of course brings up that web browser and you can control the configuration uh, with different parameters. Um, if you want to use things that aren't parameters, then you will need to sort of include that as a, as a config. Um, so what you can do is just create your own config file. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on this. Um, you know, my config.config. Um, you could store this somewhere and then specify this as a as a um, as a path. But like hypothetically, you could um, have a params block and then just sort of you know put in whatever whatever you want here. CPUs equals two or five or ten or whatever um, as a part of that. And as a, as a good example of this, um, I think you can actually use the test profiles. Um, back here for, for any of the pipelines, um, just to actually see what like a config might look like. Um, so here, for example, um, oh, it's called max CPUs, uh, than the CPUs um, is two. So you can just put this into the pipeline. Um, here, um, instead of 10, we're just gonna say two or four or, or whatever, um, and start listing these as we go down um, by adding different parameters that you've already added. Um, you can also do different things with like profiles and the management of your container software and stuff like that. All of this is really sort of described in the configuration um, and I wish we had more time to dig into this in detail. Um, but that's what I wanted to demonstrate is one, that there's a hierarchy. Uh, two, that there's this NF, NFCore launch command to help you configure NFCore pipelines. Um, but also there's a huge amount of information here that can really help you fine tune any pipeline execution without needing to modify the actual code base. Okay, so that is kind of execution. Um, we can see that NFCore has a lot of pipelines that you can sort of pull them and run them very quickly and easily from the GitHub repository. Um, you could also do stuff like git clone and bring it into your system um, and then just run it directly. Um, say you had it sitting in a, in a folder in a folder in this directory, you could just run it straight like that as well. Um, what I will do next is sort of jump to downloading pipeline. So um, this is for people that are running offline. So a lot of people might be at an institute where their, their high performance cluster is offline and they don't have access to the internet. Um, with NF Core, you can also download a pipeline, um, including all download, um, including all of the um, singularity images that you might be using for the execution of a pipeline. So in this example, I'm just going to say, um, I'm going to again go for RNA-seq, all the pipelines that are available are included here. Um, we might want to download um, this version here. We want to include singularity images. Um, do I want to define a cache? So this is this is a really nice way that if multiple users and use the same cache directory on a, on a system, you can specify that system now. Um, so that all of the singularities images are downloaded and stored there. Um, and you don't need to worry about um, sort of storing the same images multiple times and every user having a different different cache. Um, so I really recommend this. 
Um, you can also export this um, in your system. Um, I'm just going to do this in my workspace tools um, just so we can see it populate down the side of the screen here. I'm just going to call it training. Um, do we want to export this? So it's opened every time in a new terminal. So this is adding it to your um, to your bash RC file. Um, we're just going to say yes. It is going to ask us um, how do we want to download this? So this will really be a preference thing if you want to download it and then unzip it in your system or just try and download it as the singularity images. Um, for ease, I'm just going to go for a, um, a zip file. And then it'll start downloading. Um, this might actually fail on GitHub because singularity is installed. Um, oh, there we go. No, but it does still download, which is cool, actually. I don't know how to do that. Um, so it's just downloading all the singularity images. And you can see here that it's um, populating down here. Um, with all of these different images. Um, and the idea here is that you could download everything and then export it um, to your offline system using um, some sort of internal um, transfer. What you can see over here is that we already have all the, um, the configs um, or a bunch of config files or the singularity images are getting populated there. Um, we also have all the work model information here. So this is what you'd expect to see on GitHub as well. Um, but yeah, like I said, um, all this has been downloaded. You could transfer it to your system um, and execute everything there quite easily and quickly. Um, so um, again, this is another way that so pipelines are very portable. You don't need to necessarily overthink how you are going to get all the software and install them uh, offline. Um, and I really, really do recommend um, doing this if you are uh, working on a system that is, is disconnected from the internet, uh, particularly those that might be working at a, a clinic, for example. Um, okay, so that's just going to continue um, downloading and running in the background. Um, I don't think I need to do too much for that at the moment. Um, I really just wanted to show that this is an option um, for people um, who don't have internet access on their, their sort of main HPC system. Okay, um, what we're going to do now is jump across to uh, some more information for developers. So this is going to be a little bit different. Um, and this will include a bit more sort of nitty gritty detail about like some of these files and some of the things that are happening as a part of like the automated testing um, and also some of the, the other tools that are available as a part of NF Core um, that really sort of help maintain best practices. Um, so I'm going to make a new directory. So I've just moved back one directory um, and I'm just going to call this training two. Um, so we can see here that oh, I'm going to move into that training two directory. Some bad learning practice there, but let's not worry about it. Uh, we're going to go to File, Open Folder, Training 2. Um, so this is just because all this is downloading in that other folder and I don't want to stop it. Um, it can be more trouble than it's worth, uh, but this is just a nice way to sort of load a new environment um, in a new folder without having all of this sort of happening in the background. Um, okay, so again, um, I'm in this new folder called Training 2. I've just reset my Explorer off to the left there. Um, they have a nice new clean Explorer window. So, um, like I said, this is really for uh, people that are interested in creating and developing a pipeline. So NFCore also has a lot of tooling that is available for um, the creation of a pipeline. So um, as can be seen here, we kind of have this, this information for users, um, which we talk about list launch download. Um, I've skipped over licenses. Um, but here we're going to start with, with NFCore Create. So NF or create is basically how we start with a template. So we can start um, an NF Core pipeline. We're going to call it um, demo. This is a description. Um, and the author is going to be Chris. So again, um, all I've done is given it a name, which is demo, a description. This is description, not very creative of me, and the author, which is Chris. Um, here, given the option to customize which part of the template we want to use, um, for the purposes of this, we're just going to say no, and we're going to include everything as a part of this. Um, with a little bit of information here, um, so I'll just bring that to the top of this, bit further up the screen. Um, because NFCore Pipe is so heavily integrated with Git and version control, um, here it is recommended that you do sort of um, move into the directory and then sort of push this to Git. Um, so you can start tracking this online uh, using your GitHub account. Um, I'm not going to do that here. I'm just going to keep uh, pushing on. 
But as you can see as well, um, Git is also installed on this. Um, and I can use Git status. Um, we can see that they're on the master branch and where we are operating. Um, oh, that's no, because I'm a slightly different directory. Apologies. Um, okay, so um, where I was previously, because I'm actually working in a GitHub repo um, for the NF core tooling, um, I've moved into my new folder and now into my new pipeline, which I've created with NF core create. Um, and you can see that here on the master branch. Um, what I actually want to do is show you um, the branches. Um, so here, um, we're actually on the master branch, but there's also the dev and the template. Um, so the template I mentioned earlier, and templates, um, be regular template updates, and you can sync these into your, your dev and master. Dev is kind of like the, um, the development branch for a pipeline. Anything that goes into master has to go through dev first, um, according to NF Core best practices. And what this will do is um, it will sort of force you to go through multiple reviews um, of people in the community um, or locally as well. So all of this is controlled by sort of um, automated GitHub actions, asking for reviews before um, it can be sort of merged into these dev and master branches. Um, you can turn all of this off, but this is just an idea. Um, it's really me just explaining that a lot of this is happening behind the scenes and that for any pipeline to be maintained or updated on NF Core, it does have to go through rigorous review processes. Um, okay, so I haven't actually changed anything on this pipeline um, yet. So you can see STA status. Um, there's, you're on the master branch and there's nothing to commit, so there's nothing to worry about there. Um, I do want to mention very quickly as well that you'll, you'll never have to touch this template um, branch. If you start messing with that, then you'll, you'll be in for a world of hurt um, just because you'll have a lot more conflicts as you try to keep your pipeline maintained using um, NF Core tooling. Okay, um, so one thing I want to do now um, is to show you that we're sitting in this folder. Um, this is the big long folder, very similar to the RNA seq folder that I showed you previously. Um, I've just moved back one directory so we can see that the pipeline is called NF Core Demo. What I want to show you is that this is actually a working workflow. Oh, oh geez, I'm just going to clear that, move it up a little bit so everyone can see it. Um, so I'm going to use next flow run. Because this isn't on the NF Core repo, we don't actually need to specify that because next flow will automatically look for a pipeline locally before it will start looking at the, um, the GitHub repository or another repository that you've specified. Um, in this case, the NF Core demo is sitting in the directory that we're in. Um, so we're sitting in here at the moment. Um, what we are going to do um, is we're going to use um, a profile. So all NF Core template Pipelines already come with some profiles pre-installed. Um, the first being a test and the second being um, Docker, for example. And it's going to ask for an output directory as well, very similar to the uh, RNA seq pipeline. I was going to call this my results this time. So um, that'll start running. Again, what it's going to do is it's going to go away and pull that pipeline. Um, well, actually, it doesn't need to pull the pipeline this time. It's just going to run the pipeline. Um, what it will do is go away and pull the tools from Docker um, and execute this locally on my system. Um, so as you can see here, uh, so given a name, we're using Docker as container engine. Uh, I've got some information about the launch directory, work directory. All of this is just happening as a, as a default um, for um, that is created as a part of the template. So we can actually go and look in here and we can see in our config folder, uh, like shown before, we've got this, this base config. Um, which is all this information about, um, you know, the resources that we're allocating. So this will be very familiar, as well as this test config, um, which is very minimal, um, excuse me, a minimal um, set of test data that can be used to execute um, this pipeline. So what you'll see um, down here is that we've got the pipeline starting to run. Um, you'll see the processes that we've got, um, some processes already installed. Um, these can be seen down here in the modules. So we've already got local, um, local NF Core modules. Um, I'll explain these in more detail as a part of the modules and sub workflows content. But for now, um, something you haven't been um, exposed to yet is that you can actually separate out um, your processes from your main workflow to help readability, and you can just include them in that main workflow. This is something that will be covered in greater detail as a part of uh, session three. Um, but for now, um, all you really need to know is that 
um, in here in the, in the main workflow folder. Um, you know, this process, for example, um, the sub workflow, excuse me, um, has been included from sub workflows. And down here, we're including like the FastQC module, for example, um, which is an NF core module um, from here, which is just a, a path to this folder, wherever it may be. Uh, here. It's sold here, for example. Um, and this might look familiar, although a little bit more complicated, um, being a process with an input and output, uh, a when statement, which you wouldn't have seen before, um, and some scripts, as well as a stub, which is something that's relatively new as well. Anyway, um, I digress. What I wanted to show you was that this, this pipeline has run. Um, everything has run to completion. Um, we're getting sort of some, some buggy local stuff up there, which I think is more of a GitHub thing than anything else. Um, and what we have is the work directory. We saw the work directory yesterday. Um, so this will be all the, uh, the hex numbers um, generated as a part of this. So this will be one for each process and four for this one here. So um, 60 is one, but if we were to run with um, ANSI log false, we would have seen multiple lines for that um, with the rest of these that are missing here. Um, and we could go and look at all of those in detail. I'm actually sure if tree is installed on this. No, it's not. Um, and then of course, in my results, we can see what's over there. Um, we have some results from FastQC, MultiQC, and some pipeline info. So um, what I really wanted to show you here was that this, this initial NF core create pipeline is actually a working pipeline um, straight out of the box. Um, and that's a really nice way to start your pipeline. Um, because it already has all of the folders and other things that you might expect to find. It's already got some, some configs, which is a really great place to start um, for your development. Um, what we'll find as we build on this in, in the rest of the session and the future sessions um, is that this is a really powerful um, and I think important way to start a pipeline because um, it really sets the foundation for, for best practices um, for, for the rest of your pipeline well, or using best practices for the rest of your pipeline. Um, okay, so what I've done already um, is create a pipeline now. Um, and as you might expect, uh, we could spend a lot of time sort of looking at different folders and trying to sort of play with different modules or functions. And, um, you know, there's, there's really endless possibilities from this point. Um, but I talk about best practices a lot. And you might think, oh, man, like he just keeps going on about best practices. Like, you know, it's a lot of hot air. Um, but I, I don't think it is. I think NFCore has um, some really great practices and they have a lot of tooling to help you maintain best practices. Um, and the first one I wanted to show you um, is this NFCore linting. So linting is a way that we check a pipeline against NFCore guidelines. Um, in this situation, what, what I'm sort of referring to as best practices. Um, so what we will do is we will now use the linting on the pipeline that we've just created. Um, so again, here we are in the training two folder. I am going to move into the um, NF core demo folder. Um, you'll need to be in here to actually execute this. And then you can type NF core lint. So um, for those that are familiar, linting is just a way that we can check the code to make sure that it conforms with um, different standards. So for example, um, we can check that um, some files haven't been edited or um, modified in any way. So what we have here is the results of the, the linting. We see that 180 tests have been passed, zero tests have been ignored, 22 tests have warnings, and zero tests have been failed. Um, up here we have... Um, 21 pipeline test warnings. So what you'll find as a part of the NFCore create um, function is that it does introduce a lot of to-do statements. And if you are interested in a um, great way to resolve these um, and how you might use these yourself, um, by having these to-do statements, um, you can use um, this to-do tree um, over here, which is already installed as a part of this environment. Um, and you can actually go through and identify these and jump to these straight away. Um, here, for example, um, as ways to check and give yourself a minus to come back and edit um, certain pieces of code. Um, in this case, as a part of the template, 
um, these are all to do's that you might um, that would be recommended to go back and and modify um, to make your your pipeline better. Um, okay, so that's great. Um, we have a wee flag here saying that this module is out of date. Um, we will update this as a part of the NF Core um, modules content, which we will be getting to very soon. But what I wanted to do is actually sort of defer for a little bit um, and sort of continue talking about this linting. So there are a number of tests that are uh, happening sort of behind the scenes when we do this. Um, I think that um, some of those tests, for example, um, can be viewed here. So there are a number of files that you shouldn't change as a part of this. Um, here's just some information about the NF call tooling. Um, there are a number of files that, like I said, shouldn't be changed um, or we, we dislike you changing, um, such as the code of conduct, for example. So over here in the pipeline um, that we've just created, um, oops, sorry, over here, um, we can go down here to the code of conduct, which is written in Markdown. And as a part of NF Core, we sort of have these this, this code of conduct about how people should sort of um, interact and communicate and work together on these pipelines. Um, as a part of this, you might think, okay, um, I want to change this and sort of remove this or do something um, which is discouraged. Um, so here, for example, um, I do what I want. Then I'll save that. Because this is a file that is maintained or checked as a part of linting, um, so one of the linting checks is to check that this file hasn't been modified. If we were to run this lint test again, um, we can see that this test has now failed. Um, obviously, we, we don't want you to um, turn off these checks if you don't need to. Um, we'd highly discourage it, but for some pipelines you might need to. Um, so what uh, you can do is actually uh, go away and modify this um, to turn this off. So over here in the, uh, which file is it? It is the nfcore.yaml. Um, this is where some of these checks are sort of controlling and um, controlled rather, um, as well as some information about the pipeline is stored. So here you can actually add in some, um, some extra code. Um, I've taken this from the training material um, that's on the NFCore website, but all I've done here is I've turned off the pipeline to do, so this will stop the warnings um, because of all the do statements. And here I have um, allowed the files unchanged to exclude code of conduct. Um, so I can save that there. Oops. Uh, sorry, I've just closed the wrong window. Um, I will just quickly reopen that and fix my code and okay. So uh, the last thing I was doing was I was adding in uh, some information to this NF Core YAML file. What I've done here is just added in um, some information for the linting, which I've turned off the pipeline to do's and also added in code of conduct to a list of files unchanged, meaning that it will be ignored from the linting test. So now if you were to run NF Core lint, as I'm doing down the bottom there. Let's move it up on the screen so you can see it a bit easier. Uh, you can see that all the tests are passing. We have two tests that are ignored, which are the two um, that I've just specified, being ignore the code of conduct and ignore the list of to-dos. And we still have that one test warning from MultiQC because I haven't done anything about that yet. That is really where I wanted to leave the actual linting tests. Um, but before I go any further, I wanted to talk a little bit about Prettier. Um, so Prettier is used in NF Core for checking the quality of your Markdown documents. So you can use Prettier by typing in Prettier minus C for check, and then a dot for the directory that we're sitting in. Um, if it was in a different directory, you could specify that path. And what it does is it checks the quality of the Markdown code. What I want to show you is that you can actually use this to um, check the quality of code and also make edits that are required for it to comply with um, an easier readability format. So Prettier is automatically run when you submit your code to NF Core, um, NF Core GitHub repository. It'll run a series of tests as it's uploaded, so through the, um, the CIs. And this is really just to make sure that everything is of a similar standard and quality so that um, if someone else comes along, they will have an understanding of, of, of your markdowns and it'll make sure everything is formatted properly. 
So what I've done here is I've just quickly edited the change log, um, which is a markdown file, um, a .md file, and I've removed the line between the heading and the actual text. What we will now see if we run if we run prettier again is that we see that there are code style issues, and we'll ask, did we forget to run prettier? In which case we did, and we can go back and run it again, but this time with a minus w. So uh, minus w means right, and it will automatically fix these issues. So what you'll hopefully see now is that um, in the top here, it has fixed the issue. So it has reintroduced those lines that I initially uh, removed from this markdown file. So again, um, all I've done is I checked it initially and then just rewrote um, with prettier. And as already mentioned as well, um, this is really just happening at the, at the CI level. So when you submit a pull request to GitHub um, in one of the NF core repositories, this will automatically run um, to check that the quality of your markdown is, is, is good. Okay, um, so that's really that. Uh, we also had, we also use black for checking the quality of the, um, the Python scripts. Um, in this case, there's only two Python files. Um, one of them will probably be up here in the, in the, in the bin, wherever that is, here it is, um, for the check sample sheet. Um, so it's just making sure that the commas are in the right place and all the indentation is correct. Um, so that's just another way that we really check, or NF call checks that the quality of your code um, and your documentation is, is, is high and is a good standard. Okay, um, so what I wanna talk about next um, before we move on to modules and sub workflows is the Nextflow schema. So down here is the Nextflow schema. Um, and as you can see, it's a bit of a monster. So this is what's used to render the information for the parameters on the website, uh, but also in the NF core launch, um, which we've just talked about. So whenever you add a new parameter, you will need to add it into the, the Nextflow schema in the, the JSON file. But as you can imagine, this can be incredibly difficult when you have so many parameters and it can be a bit of a monster to edit um, and format properly. Luckily, NFCore already has some tooling to help you with this. So the NFCore schema function um, has a few sort of uh, sub commands, um, build, docslint, and validate. And what we're going to be looking at uh, today is the build function. So what I'll do first before um, we try and do anything else is actually introduce some new parameters to uh, this pipeline. Uh, so I'm just going to call that bar, uh, my new parameter bar, and we can call that something. We're just going to give it a string, uh, which what's a good string, which is called a dog. And then we're going to add another one, a foo, which we will just give it a number. Let's just go for 32, and we will save that. So say you're developing a pipeline, you think you've done a good job of including all your parameters, um, and everything looks good. But you run your lint and you realize that you've forgotten to update your schema. Um, that should be detected as a part of a linting test. Yep, so we see here two tests have failed because it's picked up two parameters that are missing. So what it's saying here is the parameter bar from the Nextflow conflict, which is a file that we've edited, is not found in the Nextflow schema. This is where we can use an nfcore schema build function to help us resolve this. So instead of actually editing the schema file, we can use this tool to uh, get us most of the way there and also open up a nice browser that we can edit all of this in without having to touch that, that JSON file. So um, add to pipeline schema. Do I want to add params.bar? Um, yes. And do I want to add params.foo? Yes. So it is running that to the schema, but even better, it gives us the option to launch a builder for customizing and editing this in, um, the customizing and editing this. So we can go over here and click open, and this will take us to this browser window. So this is a rendered version of that Nextflow schema file. So everything that was already included uh, is already here. So we have the inputs, um, the outputs, um, we have descriptions of what they are, the types, um, default values if that's relevant. We've also got the option to say if it's required or hidden, and we have some other options here to um, modify other settings if you want to. All of this is included under different groups, and you can add different groups up here, um, along with adding other parameters um, at the same time. What we can do is we can scroll right down to the bottom here, and we can see that we've had these new lines created for our new two parameters, bar and foo. What I want to do is just move those up into this, this section to demonstrate that you can quickly and easily drag these around. 
you can see that we have this ID already, um, and we have the default values, which are already specified as a part of that Nextflow config. Remembering that that Nextflow config file is where I've installed or included all of my parameters, uh, default values. So first things first, um, like I said, I've moved these up into this group, but I want to give it a nice cool um, we emoji for um, bone probably a bit of a dog, but anyway, um, I've added some icons. Um, of course, for these, you probably would use something that's a bit more familiar for um, what the actual um, parameter is doing, but here I've just added in some random ones. I'm happy with the IDs, but I want to add some descriptions. So here I can just type in, um, this is bar, it is a string. Um, down here I've got foo, this is foo, it is a number. Here I can actually add some help text, so over these little books, I can click that, and then I can add in some help text. This is helpful. Summation mark, because it is very helpful. Um, so things like this will be rendered on the launch, um, like I said, as well as the website. Here I can change the type. So at the moment it is string, but we have options for numbers, integers, and booleans. Depending on what type um, you want to choose, um, you'll have different options and different defaults. So that's going to give me an error because dog is not a, not a string. Uh, it's not a, a number or an integer. Um, if I change it to Boolean, for example, it would automatically change this to true or false. Um, but I'm going to change that back to string and keep it as dog for now. I have the option to either have it as required or hidden um, for these options, which in this case are um, generic options. Uh, most of them are hidden already, so I'll just do that as well. And over here, we have some additional settings. So here, I could say um, it has to be a numerated value. Um, I could add in some sort of pattern. Or I could choose a format. So because this is a string, I could say it has to be a path or a path directory, um, or it could be a file or directory. Um, I'm just going to close that for now. For foo, um, which we've got as an integer, we said as a default, it's 32. I've now decided I want that to be one, and I can edit that here. I could, of course, again, use enumerated values. So if you had sort of set um, criteria, you could sort of or set options that you can sort of navigate between. You could include those there. Or you can add a minimum and a maximum value, and I can save that as well. When it feels like I'm done, um, we have a big long schema at the bottom here that has already been rendered um, automatically. You can see that we've got some options that have been included there. Alternatively, you can just click finished. What that'll do is take us to this next page, which it says, um, OK, this is done. And if your end of course schema build is still running, you can go back to it, and everything has already been um, transferred there. So we can go back over here, um, and we can actually look at the next flow schema. We can scroll to the bottom, and we can see that this has already been updated with what I've done in that browser, which is fantastic. Again, I just want to reinforce that you should never actually have to touch this, this next flow schema file. You can use the next flow schema build function. You can do this as many times as you want to go back and edit this, and keep editing it as you remember things, or decide to change things, or restructure things. Um, it's a really fantastic function. and. Um, you know, it's always it's always really nice to see people discover this um, if they are developing a pipeline because it is one of the, the lesser known functions, but I think it's one of the more important ones. Okay, anyway, um, so now that's been added, we could run our NF call int again and see that everything is passing because that's now been added to the um, the schema. 139 test pass, two ignored, one warning, and nothing has failed, which is success. Okay, so I think that's where I'll leave it today. Um, for this part of the course. I'm just going to go away and have a wee break. So I'll see you all very soon. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for your patience there. So what I've done in the background, um, just as you'll notice that my screen is a bit different now, uh, what I've done is I have just tidied up uh, my window a little bit, removed some of those, those um, some of that code I had shown up the top there. Um, I'm now sitting in this, this training two folder, um, and down here in the terminal I've actually moved into the, the NF Core demo, which is the pipeline I created using the NF Core create uh, function. 
Okay, so what we will do now is jump to talking about NF core modules. So like I said earlier, NF core modules are processes uh, that are used to execute different tools and software that are quite uh, common in bioinformatics or shared across different bioinformatic pipelines um, using NF core and Nextflow. So NF core has tooling for this. Um, so if you type in NF core, NF core modules, um, you'll see a list of, of commands that will come up. So list info, install, update, remove, and patch. Uh, we'll explore all of these uh, now. As well as that, we also have some extras for actually developing new modules. Um, this is something for developers. I'll touch on this very briefly, but I won't dig into it as much, um, just because it is kind of that next step up, and it won't make as much sense until you've done the rest of the, the rest of the training anyway. Okay, so what I will show you first is this modules folder over here. So when you create a, an end of core pipeline using the template, you'll automatically create um, some folders here, such as modules and sub-workflows. Modules are where we store the processes um, that we're going to execute as a part of our pipeline. So you might remember from session one that we had processes included as a part of our, our, our large Nextflow script. With DSL2 and Nextflow, um, you can actually have these stored in different folders now. So here, for example, um, this statement here, which is a part of our main demo dot nf script so our main workflow we are including this module that is stored in a different folder so here for example we have uh, the fastqc script over here and the modules the nf core folder uh, we have the fastqc folder inside that we have main which is the process for executing fastqc um, written by the community as well as that in the modules folder we also have local so this is uh, these are other modules other other processes that have been written um, in this case, this is specific to the workflow and it hasn't been shared with the NF core community. So you could also write and store uh, local modules in this folder as well. And the way that you include those is very much the same as here, uh, but instead of including it from NF core, you just include it from uh, local as shown up here uh, with this include statement. Jumping back to the terminal, what I will show you now is some of the functionality of this tooling. So the first is NF core list. And this will give us the option to look at all of the modules. Um, that all oh, that's NF Core list after all the pipelines. We need to put a modules in there. So this is NF Core modules list. It'll give us the option to either look at the local or remote modules. So the first thing we'll look at is local. So this is a list of all the, the modules that are already installed as a part of NF Core and this pipeline. So here we can see the custom dumper of software is a fast QC and the multi QC. Uh, which are all included here um, under this NF core folder inside the modules folder. We could also look at what is on the remote. So the remote, uh, these are all the, the modules, the processes that are already available um, on the NF core repo. Um, so depending on what tool you're after, there might also already be a module uh, that is available for you to download and install quickly and easily. Going back to this list of list of tools, um, we can also ask for information about these modules. So using NF Core modules info, what we will see, uh, we'll get asked this question is, is a module locally installed? First of all, let's, let's say yes. Um, it is now going to ask me for what module we want to look at. I'm just going to say multi-QC because we know multi-QC is installed over here. And this is the information about that module. Um, and it's, it's got information about what the inputs are and what the outputs are. This might not make a lot of sense here because we haven't talked about all of this in detail. Um, again, we'll come back to this in session three, but for now, it's just, um, I want to show you that you can address or look at the information for these modules without actually having to go to the website and open up the modules information page. We can also look at information for modules that we might want to install. So we haven't actually installed these modules yet, but we want to investigate if these tools are available and what they look like. So we're going to say no this time. So the module is not installed. And what I can do is I can just look through all the modules that are available, type in the start of the command or the piece of software that I might be interested in. Um, BWA MEM is quite a common tool used in bioinformatics. And here I can already see some information about this, this tool. Uh, for example, what the inputs are, what the descriptions of those inputs are and, and the patterns. So much like a pipeline, there's a lot of documentation and information around what can be, what is included as a part of a module. Um, if you are creating a module for NF Core, you'll need to sort of create all of this information um, using a similar schema format to what we have for the pipeline. And of course, there is talking to help with that as well. Um, we'll keep moving along. So NF Core modules also has this install function. So this is really where things get interesting and really, really useful. Um, so oh, I've typed in the wrong command there. 
I want to type in NF Core modules install. So this is where I can use NF Core tooling to find the tool on that NF Core repository and install it locally. So what I'm going to do is just look for um, a tool. As you can see, there are there are lots of different tools here. Um, I'm going to go for something quite simple. So cat fastq, uh, fastq. Um, and as we can see here, this has now been installed. What has happened is that um, over here in the Explorer, you'll see that this cat um, has been added. So this is the cat folder. And inside that, we have um, the FastQC folder. So this is actually a laid, um, a laid module. Um, and in here, we have information on the cat um, FastQ. So this is the actual module that has been installed. You can see that this has been installed as well as the meta. This is the meta information that will be populated if you use NF, um, NF modules info. And what we also have down here in the, in the command window is this include statement. So with this, you could quickly and easily copy this over to your, to your workflow um, here, for example, and you could just quickly drop this in. Um, the formatting here isn't overly important, but to make it pretty, I'll just exit that, move that over. So now in my main pipeline, if I wanted to, to execute this, um, I could just include this and then somewhere down in my actual workflow block, um, add that process, much like we did yesterday as a part of session one. Okay, so um, as a very quick summary, that is that is NF core uh, modules installed. You can see that there are there are you know 700, 800 almost tools available. Um, if you go and look at the repository, they are all listed here, like I said. Um, and it is really, really quick and easy just to install these. Here's another example. So it's been added over here automatically as well. What you'll also notice is that if you do something like NF core lint, um, like we were doing earlier, it's taking a wee second to run. All of this information has been added. You'll see that all the tests are still passing. There are now more tests. Um, what is happening in the background here is that all of these tools are automatically added to this file here called JSON, uh, modules JSON. And this is really used to help track the tool. So that if things happen to this tool um, and it has been modified or edited in some way and it no longer fits with what's happened on NF Core or what is stored on the NF Core module, um, the version has changed um, either locally or on the remote, this modules.json file helps record all of that. So this is a really nice way um, so that we know that if tools are updated or moved, much like what was happening when we were looking at uh, the NFCore modules in the last, um, when we were looking at the NFCore create, we were looking at the linting previously, um, and that, that multi-QC was out of date. This is the file that's actually keeping track of that. So NFCore modules, um, again, is really, really powerful uh, because we've installed the DSL2 module into the pipeline using this install function. Hypothetically, we may need to update a module. Um, so for that, you could just do um, update. So this, again, this is any core modules update. You can either name a module that you want to update specifically, or you can just say all modules. Um, if you wanted to look at the differences, I don't think there's any differences here because everything's already up to date, uh, but you could just hit no previews. And what it's doing here is it's checking against this modules JSON file. We're seeing that the modules in core, all of these tools. So the three that were originally in the NF Core Create that I created with NF Core Create and these two that I've now added um, are all included there. Um, okay, so that one's a little bit harder to actually sort of live um, show because it was when you import the, the modules, they will be automatically up to date. But um, I just wanted to point out that there is this update function that you can use to um, update or keep your keep your processes up to date with the latest versioning of tools. So if the tool is updated on Bioconda, for example, um, that module has been updated on the repo, um, you can very quickly update it in your pipeline using this using this update function. What you almost excuse me also might find is that you now want to remove a module. Um, so the tool is no longer relevant or it's been superseded or you just want to remove from your pipeline for whatever reason. Um, so you might want to use NF Core modules remove. So here we can list the modules um, that we have installed. So I'm going to remove the BWA align. This is populated based on what's already included in your NF Core modules folder um, up over here in the Explorer. I can just go BWA align. I can hit enter. Oh, we're in the wrong window. Um, automatically that has been removed, and you'll see here that modules JSON has been modified as well. So 
as you'll see down here in the command window, it says remove files for BWA align, um, and it's all its dependencies. So BWA align has been removed. It's no longer a part of my pipeline. And like I said, you can see here up in the modules JSON has been removed as well. So again, just to reinforce this, this, this modules JSON is really used to help track all of your modules uh, coming from NF Core. It won't be tracking what you're doing locally. So these modules that you have over here in the local folder and the modules folder are, aren't tracked in the same way. So um, it is worth sort of pointing out as well that this is a really nice way of sort of controlling and keeping your modules up to date. Um, you help you get help from the community um, because anything you want to do locally here, you're going to have to manually do yourself, um, which can be quite time consuming. Um, so it's another way that the community and having an open community is a really um, awesome resource because it helps um, you keep your code up to date. Um, of course, you don't have to update tools if you don't want to. Um, you could just sort of update one by one without doing all of them at a time. But um, having a community to, to help you out is, is really fantastic. Okay, so we're getting to the bottom of this list um, here. So again, any core modules. Uh, we've just removed a module. There's also this function here, which is called patch. And this is um, it's a really cool function as well, I think, because quite often what we'll find is that um, you know, you might want to have a slightly different implementation of a tool, and what's written on the NF Core repository doesn't quite fit your purpose. So for some situations, you might find that you need to edit a module. So this is more for a developer who has found that they need to edit a module for some reason. What you can do is here, for example, let's just add in another output, which is just going to be a path to... Um, Let's just split this into two. It's probably a better one. So here, for example, um, all I'm doing is I've just split this tuple. So now this would be admitted as separate channels, not the one channel. Um, I'm just going to change the formatting to help readability a little bit. Um, this may all fall over because I'm uh, making this up as I go along. But what I've done here is just split this out into different channels. We can use the submit. Um, and we're just going to call this uh, meta info. Um, this won't make a lot of sense at the moment because we haven't talked about um, how the outputs are structured, especially with a meta map and the emit. But this is something, again, that we'll come back to. Um, what I'm just trying to show you here is that we can modify one of these NFCore modules um, and save it. So I'll just hit save. So again, this is one of the, the modules that I've introduced. This is this catfastq, which I have installed using the NFCore modules. Um, I've gone into the main.nf file and I've edited it. So now it will no longer match what is on the GitHub repository on, on NF Core. If I was to um, run NF Core Lint right now, what you'll find is that this test is failing because the local copy of a module does not match the remote. So the NF Core tooling is detecting that I have modified this and it no longer matches what is what is happening remotely. So ultimately, I could go back in and I could uninstall this, reinstall this, uh, work out what's happened and actually fix that. But in this situation, I'm actually going to use this, uh, this patch function. So NF Core modules patch is another function um, that can be used to help manage your modules, your, your processes. This is it here. Um, and what it says is you can create a patch file for minor changes in a module. So what I can do is any core modules patch, hit enter. It'll ask me what tool I want to patch. In this case, it's going to be the cat fast QC. Um, it has detected what is different in my module versus what's happening locally versus the remote. It has changed the meta YAML. Uh, well, has noticed that the, the meta uh, YAML is unchanged and it has created a patch file with this dot diff. What you can now see um, is over here in the um, excuse me in the browser uh, patch file of modules in called core cat fast QC written to modules in if called cat fast QC cat fast QC dot diff um, and what we should see is that this has now been modified so first things first is that if you actually go over here um, you can see that there is a new line being added to the modules dot um, JSON, so you can see that there's now a diff file, and this should be populated over here in my uh, modules folder. So we can go modules, NF core, catfastqc. 
Okay, I'm not quite sure why that isn't there. That should have popped up. Is that there? Okay, so it does appear to be there. I'm not sure why it hasn't popped up. But you can see that this is... Oh, here we go. Um, it just took a wee while to render. Um, you can see that this has been created over here as this... this um, catfastqc.diff. And what this is doing is just saying that um, on these lines of code, this is different. Um, please don't fail my lint test because of because of this, this difference. So um, if we were to run nfcore lint again, so again, nfcore lint, um, you can see that this is now passing. We have this diff file here, um, and the differences that attract as a part of this um, the differences that have been included for this module um, have been accounted for and it's also been tracked. So now, um, if this module changes again, you might need to update the patch. But ultimately, it has been, it has been tracked. Um, if this module was to be updated on NF Core, um, say there's a new version of this tool comes through, for example, then this patch will still be applied um, unless there are differences that affect um, these lines of code specifically. Um, it will automatically be integrated and used and it's all being tracked. So again, this really helps with that reusability um, of pipelines and interoperability, plus using interoperability, um, the sharing of a pipeline between um, yourself and others, because every change you've made has been tracked um, using, using this tooling. Okay, so that is everything that is really for, um, for developing using existing tools. Um, so listing what's there, finding some information about them, installing, updating, removing, and patching. There's also some information down here about developing modules. Um, and I won't, like I said earlier, I won't go into this too much because it is a little bit more complicated and we haven't talked about everything that you might need to really understand what's happening here as a part of this workshop. Uh, but just quickly, what I can show you is that there is some functionality for creating your own modules. So you could use NFCore modules create. Um, we can create the name for this new tool. Um, so I apologize, this is now down the bottom of my screen, um, but we're just gonna call it um, my new tool. Um, it has looked for dependencies for this on Anaconda, um, but we can also add in for the Bioconda package. So what's happening here is the tool is actually looking at, um, like I said, Anaconda and Bioconda for a tool that matches this name. Of course, because it's called my new tool, it doesn't exist. Um, but here, for example, you could add in um, SAM tools. Okay, so it doesn't like that. Um, but effectively, what you can do here is, is go away and find the Bioconda package that is named like this. Um, I thought SAM tools might have actually popped up here. I'm probably typing it in wrong or it needs something else. Um, ah, cool. Okay, so it does. It has worked here. Um, what it has done, it has automatically gone away and found the SAM tools, the latest version of SAM tools on Bioconda. Um, and it has downloaded and included a couple of code blocks that are used to download these tools uh, from Docker and Singularity and have those images available for you already. So if you're trying to create a module for a tool that is already on Bioconda, um, you could go and do this. I added a little symbol there. Um, here it's just asking for my name. So it's just asking um, who's creating this module. Um, I can change the number of resources here. Um, so I just, uh, we talked about labels very quickly earlier. Um, so this is the label that I'm adding to this process. Um, do I want to create um, a meta map with some information? Again, we haven't talked about this properly, which is partly why um, I don't want to talk about this too much right now. Um, but we're just going to say yes. And this is now created a new module. So this is a really great way to start off if you are developing a new module. Uh, we need to create. Um, you know, a new module using a piece of Bioconda software, for example, what this will do is it will automatically give you a lot of to-dos that you better go back through and add everything you need in to create that module. Um, you can see here that it's really created the, the process with the name My New Tool. Um, it's given it a meta ID. Um, again, we haven't talked about this yet. This is um, something that you can do um, using MetaMaps and NextFlow to help um, label and include information about your, your samples that's been passed around. Um, this is the process low, so this is the label that I added to the module earlier. Because I asked to use SAM tools, um, so this was earlier when I typed in SAM tools into the terminal, what it has done is it's gone away to Bioconda and it has found this tool, a tool called SAM tools with the most latest version, 
And this has included the code blocks required for managing that using Singularity and Docker, um, as well as Bioconda um, using Conda. So when we use those profiles, which we've talked about already with Docker, Singularity, Conda, these tools will automatically be downloaded and included um, and run uh, as a part of your pipeline. So you don't need to worry about installing any of this locally. Next they will download, install, run all this for you without having to, having to touch any of this on your local system. Um, here, it's just added in some sort of um, temporary information, some information um, like we normally expect to see as a part of a process for Nextflow. So we have an input, an output. Um, as a part of this, we also have a wind block, um, which you wouldn't have encountered before. Down here, we have a script block with a couple of um, definitions. Uh, down the bottom here, we have the actual code block with the with the SAM tools tool. Um, again, this has pulled some of this from the web, so you haven't had to do a lot of this yourself, which is really, really cool. Um, so again, um, a lot of this won't make a lot of sense right now because um, there's a lot of code there. There's a lot of sort of to-dos and things that um, won't make a lot of sense. Please don't panic about any of that right now. Um, what, I, what I really wanted to show you is that there is this create function um, and it does get you most of the way there for creating a new module, uh, which can be included in your pipeline. Um, again, it's really just a demonstration that there's, there is tooling to help you with a lot of the things that might be challenging, especially if you are starting out. Um, but like I said, please, please don't panic. Um, it's okay to not understand what all of this is doing and what all these to-dos mean. Um, what I wanted to show you is that this tooling exists um, and it's is quite a nice way of doing things. Um, what else do we have down here? So NF Core, um, there are a lot of other functions here, which um, I don't think I'll go into too much. Um, so what we have here is create test YAML. Um, so this is auto generating a test YAML. So each NF Core module, um, if you are creating as a part of the modules repository rather than a pipeline repository, um, you can create test files, which are used to automatically test the, the modules as they are created and um, integrated and used on NF Core. Um, this is partly why um, this is this is all kind of separate to what we've done already. So this wouldn't be creating a local module, which is only going to be installed here in your pipeline. Um, this would be, for example, if you cloned the the modules repository from GitHub, then you've got modules repository that is, and you wanted to create your own module um, and sort of submit that for everyone to use. Um, linting, hopefully you'll you'll see by now that I'm a big fan of linting and the Evcore linting tools. These really help keep your, your code up to best practices and anything that is sitting outside of what is expected uh, does create a warning or an error. We have um, some code here to help you bump versions of a module. If you are increasing a version, it will go through and help you update all of the version numbers. We have a tool here to help you create uh, mold um, images of different tools. So an example that you do have multiple tools as part of a scripting block, uh, this can help you create and um, run a mold um, image um, using bio containers. Um, and finally, we have a, a test function which will run module tests locally. So like I said, there are a lot of testing that goes on behind the scenes with these modules, um, helping keeping everything in line and running properly. Um, these things trigger the warnings like we saw, um, excuse me, like the warnings that we saw when we started editing that module. Um, all of these are really useful functionality for anyone who is developing. I will move on very quickly just because we are running out of time. Uh, in the session. So finally, we have um, any of course sub workflows. Um, so this this is very much like modules. Um, as I said earlier, sub workflows are the chaining of multiple tools together to create um, kind of a, a block of code or a block of modules that are frequently shared between different pipelines. Uh, this is something that's relatively new, probably in the last six to twelve months. Um, sub workflows is really sort of um, gone from an idea to an actual tool that has been included as a part of NF, NF Core. As you'll see, there's a lot of the same functions, info install, list remove, update, as well as create and the create test level. Uh, because it's a little bit newer, there's slightly less um, functionality, but I think what you'll find is this will be updated um, very, very quickly over the coming months. Like I said as well, uh, because this is new, uh, there are significantly less modules that are available um, on the repo, but, oh, and of course, sub workflows list remote. Um, so here's a list of all the sub workflows. There's probably 30 something there at the moment. Um, you can install these the same way that we have a module. Um, so we can go sub workflows info. Uh, we can ask for information about the workflow. Let's just go for this one down the bottom because I can see it. Um, VCF impute glimpse. 
Um, again, we can see the information like the care for a module. So what's coming in um, and what's coming out of the pipeline. Um, we have information here about how to install this, which I think is what we will do just so we can actually visualize it in the browser. So again, we can do any of course sub workflows install. Um, so I've just copied that command that was generated as a part of the info. Um, we have this block here, which we can include into our main workflow. Um, again, we will revisit how to do this as a part of session three. Um, and what's happened over here is we have created um, a new sub workflow in this NF core folder. So much like modules with the local and the NF core folders as part of modules or sub workflows, we also have a local and a um, NF core folder. Um, here we can see this, this sub workflow block. Again, we haven't talked about this in great detail, so this, this structure won't make as much sense. Um, but you might notice that there's, there's these include statements again. Um, so these are bringing in the modules. We have a separate workflow, which we can then use in our main workflow. So this can be included um, using similar statements to what we see up here. Um, it is taking in these channels. We have these main blocks, this main block where it's sort of chaining all of these together. So all of the different modules that are included up here, so glimpse chunk, phase, and uh, ligate are all included here, and files will be taken as inputs. They'll be taken in and processed through each of these modules and then given as outputs um, out the other side as well, uh, using the emit down the bottom here. This is a slightly different um, functionality to modules, so things are a little bit different. Um, you'll notice here that the wording is a little bit different with things like emit um, and take rather than input and output, but um, as a whole, what's happening here is that we have this, this block of code, uh, much like a module that has been imported, or you can import into a pipeline. Um, so for example, I would just copy this and put this into my, my main block um, at some point. Um, this will be the slightly wrong block. Um, I'm pretty sure probably put that in here, import the core modules, there's a bit of space for it. Okay, um, so none of these will work because I, I haven't actually sort of chain these together as part of the NF core pipeline. Uh, but what I wanted to show here is that you can import the sub workflow very quickly and easily using the NF core tooling as well. Um, okay, so what other functionalities do we have there? Sub work flows. Um, okay, yeah, so we still have like uh, the remove and update function as well. Um, so you can remove, a fun remove the sub workflow just like you've installed it as well as update it as these are continuously updated and improved on uh, by the community. We also have some functionality here to help you create your own as well as create a test YAML. Um, again, initially, um, because we're working in a pipeline repo, we would be able to create um, this or we'll create a sub workflow and install it locally. But if we work in a modules repo, uh, which is slightly different, um, it, it would create a few more test files, which we won't explore um, today as a part of the session. Okay. Um, so that's everything I wanted to show you as a part of um, the EFCOR tooling today. Um, just to recap very quickly, um, NFCOR is a different set of tooling um, outside of Nextflow. Um, it really relies on this sort of community to develop uh, best practice pipelines. And as part of that, there's modules and workflows. A lot of functionality as a part of the NFCOR tooling, um, which is really fantastic and will hopefully make your life easier if you are either executing or developing an NFCOR pipeline. Um, what you will find is that the NF core lint function will be your best friend because it helps you keep your code up to best practice. But also there are lots of functionality here to help you um, launch, download, um, and sort of uh, develop, like I said, develop your pipelines using best practices. Um, okay. I think that's it. Um, finish off today, I will just say thank you again for uh, coming along and attending this session. Um, I hope that you've all managed to learn something about the NFCore tooling and potentially some of the best practices um, and are all interested in joining the NFCore community. Tomorrow in session three, we'll go back to the material that we started in session one, so that basic Nextflow training. Uh, we'll continue that by delving more into operators, channels, processes, as well as a few other things. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, again, thank you everyone for coming and we will see you all again tomorrow.